Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we are playing a stock Hellcat. To be a bit more precise, it is the Italian Hellcat. And that is the only Axis one that you actually can get in the game. There are three in the US tree, the Super Hellcat, the Premium one, the Black Cat, also Premium, and then the Tech Tree Hellcat. And if I'm not mistaken, there is also a Chinese one, which is a very interesting lineup together with the T-3485. I obtained this vehicle for half the price uh, via Golden Eagle purchase um, throughout the 8th anniversary sale of War Thunder. Overall, I purchased 92 vehicles, planes, tanks, ships and even my helicopter for 26 million silver lines. So I saved 26 million silver lines. I made a video about it so you can actually enjoy uh, Napalm's shopping. Anyway. Um, the vehicle is completely stuck aside from parts and FPE which I more or less purchased for all stuff that I get when I purchase this in the uh, anniversary sales of War Thunder because then the modules on certain days or throughout a certain period is also half price off which is then an okay investment. As we'll see later on with this tank it actually makes little sense to purchase parts and FPE and that should be then your playstyle. Avoid getting shot in the first place. You do this by flanking, which you can see me currently doing here on Eastern Europe. Despite the tank being completely stock, I have a horsepower to ton ratio of over 20. First customer of the day is a KV220 and we just pull his teeth, rather we blacken the cannon breach, which is nice. So he now shoots me with the machine gun and I always could lose here the commander, which would be not great. I won't let this happen, so let's dance with this fat boy. And despite the stock performance, stock gun handling, that is all that she wrote for this guy. Perfect. So, we now want to continue our flanking, but I also need some breathing space. And this is kind of the deal with the Hellcat. Fire and maneuver, reposition. He fired with the machine gun at me, I got spotted, and um, obviously if the enemy team pays attention, they know that I'm here. But there are also three additional tanks with me that are currently dealing with the enemy Hellcat, which is nice. Uh, in a um, frontal engagement, this tank is not that great. Only 12.7 millimeters of armor. And yeah, because I'm not listening to Sabaton, I heard this guy and just look at this awful gun elevation speed. Yeah. So, the gun. 76mm M1 cannon and that is all that you really need. It just deals with side shots like you wouldn't believe. It has roughly 149mm of penetration and yeah, 64 grams of TNT filler. It's an IPCVC round and with just under 800 meters per second, it still has an okay muscle velocity. And I think you really feel the lack of a stabilizer on this tank. 6.1 second reload is also okay-ish, I'd say. But it's really bringing the gun to the side shots, the easy shots, where the enemy doesn't expect you. That is the strength of the bases. That we briefly could see two tanks and that PT-76 just narrowly escaped. Because the tank is so good at accelerating and coming to a standstill, you have this wobbling around of the gun and you still have, you know, World War II gun handling when it comes to the gun elevation speed. So I knew that it's very likely that this PT-76 would come around here to the front line and... Where is he? Where is he? Does he really take that long? Oh, there he is. Now, I could kill him with the machine gun. But, you know, it's one clean shot and we'll be done with it. Because firing the machine gun repeatedly, despite having it, would just give your position away more than, you know, firing a single shot and again, repositioning. That is really something that you have to train. A lot of people make the mistake of running like a headless chicken into the enemy team to get decapitated. No pun intended. Anyway, you need to learn to use and when not to use the mobility of the Hellcat to its best. And sometimes it, it, it also requires you to do nothing, to just observe. 
and also you have always to respect aircraft. Every aircraft in the game can kill this thing, not just with bombs and rockets, but also with gunfire and even light machine guns because this thing is, surprise surprise, open topped. So in the greatest sense, this is a glass cannon. So in the shadow of the building, not moving, uh, not to be expected here because not also not firing, that is one of those things that uh, sometimes lets you survive when others are maneuvering in the open of your team. Because sometimes they can take the punishment from aircraft, you certainly can't. And again, I just missed two enemy tanks. And again, we just play the patience game. And they must come through. And if I take one of them out, that's half their advance gone. Thank you very much. And that's already ace. That's already five kills. In a completely stopped tank. Without ever getting really shot at. Granted, the uh, KV-220 was uh, a little bit of the exception. So at this point, I was hanging around in that area for so long and for five kills that I have to expect somebody coming for a revenge kill or somebody, you know, at least trying to flank. And out of my three team members that were with me, uh, only two are remaining. So only one is remaining. Okay. <laughs> because he was bombed by a plane. Remember what I said about standing in the open? Yeah, American cast is just nasty. And despite driving a American or an American looking vehicle, yeah. And again, not listening to Sabaton, lets me prepare for that shot. Beautiful. I'm not quite sure if I killed that guy before. I don't think so, but anyway, he wanted to flank. But he got spanked. And again, we reposition. Very calm, methodical approach to the game. Now at this time, I think to myself, should I shoot at this? Oh, is he coming for me? Hide behind the building. It would have been too late, but no, he actually tries to survive here. Getting shot by multiple 50 cals. And also by a Wirbelwind, uh, yeah, no, every plane says nope to that. Another plane, again, very lucky here to not get spotted. If this would be, let's say, Yak-90, I'd have no chance. One shot in the engine, and then one shot to kill the crew or to kill the ammo rack. You have just no resistance to that 37mm. At this point, um, it's just securing the remaining kills. And that is obviously one of those debatable things. But look at this. We secured the battle. We have essentially won. It's just now cleaning up. And I have no regrets now going for the cap. And I'm, despite being here quite a bit of a distance away from the spawn, I'm still spotted. If you look at the minimap, you can see the red circle around the enemy's uh, spawn. Now that indicates that I am spotted on the minimap. So in hindsight, there could be a bit of a better positioning be done, but you know, uh, whatever floats your boat. As long as it works, it ain't stupid, right? And we get our kill number seven. In a stock tank. Now at this point, I really want to survive. And this is then the lesson. Um, I think at some point I checked the leaderboard and I noticed that I was the one with the most kills, if I'm not mistaken. And... If I now survive the last slaughter here, I get not just the heavy metal hero, but also the survivor, just increasing the civil line income. And uh, to be honest, that would be another 15,000 civil lines. So the question is, is another kill worth it? Obviously it then looks better as the result, but when it comes to the overall civil line income, but to be honest, I'm actually after RP, and sadly those awards don't grant you additional RP. I'm still spotted here on the other riverside. And yeah, um, I'm not really too happy here about aircraft coming in and out. That really, that really is uh, strange. I don't like aircraft. So, anyway. What have we learned? 
Stock Hellcat has all the ingredients. Mobility and a 76mm gun with an APCVC round with a high explosive filler. Uh, you know, shoot the maneuver, just complete and utter repositioning and then getting 7 kills for a really great result. So let's have a quick look at the post battle results. And yeah, that is still 4,800, 4,900 RP and 52,000 civil lines. And let's have a look at what we can buy. Yeah, that's that's quite a lot. So we got the suspension. I should have gone for something else, but I go for filter to improve then the mobility, crew replenishment, and then obviously after this transmission, engine, etc. That's it for me today, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. If so, give it a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies, and on the battlefields of War Thunder.